Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. Before we get started, just a quick thank you for getting Extreme Genes to where it is today. We're on radio stations all over America, and our podcast is growing exponentially. I'm often asked, what can I do to support Extreme Genes? Well, that's easy. Become a part of our Extreme Genes Facebook community and like our page. Share the podcast with your friends. Follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, support our sponsors through links on our website. They're the best in the business. Thanks again. Now let's get on to this week's podcast. Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and Extreme Genes com. Yeah, I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yep, he never saw it coming. And welcome to another edition of Extreme Genes, America's family history show, and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this, of course, is our special Roots Tech edition. It's going on while Roots Tech is happening. And if you're not familiar with that, Roots Tech happens to be the largest family history conference in the world. Something like 25,000 people converging on the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah right now. And if you're listening to this, no matter where you are, you can follow along and hear some of the talks, see some of the classes by going to rootstech.org. They've got streaming video going on there all the time. So check that out. And then next week, we're going to tell you more about some of the things that we learn, new technology, some of the things happening in some of the classes, some of the exciting directions that family history is going in. But right now in studio with me, my good friend from Boston, Massachusetts, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, David Allen Lambert. How are you, David? Good to I'm have you. I'm doing great. Well, we're going to have lots to talk about next week with Roots Tech, but I have some other exciting news for our listeners with Family History News. All right. Where do we start? Well, we're digging deep right into the old bus station at 126th Street in Harlem. Boy, that's uh, right in the heart of Harlem, it isn't really it? It really is. Wow. They found over 140 bones from an old Dutch cemetery, but this isn't Dutch settlers. These are African Americans that were part of the settlement. Probably some of them were actually would have been slaves, and these are from the 17th and 18th century. And with this, with DNA and all this, they found it in this decommissioned bus station that they had speculation that it was a cemetery under there and started digging in. Voila. <laughs> Voila. Wow. There seems to be a lot of that because going across the pond over to Driftfield Terrace in York, Yorkshire, England, they have now been analyzing over 80 skeletons of Romans that they have unearthed a few years back. Now, I, I saw the digital pictures of this, and they have each individual Roman skeleton laid out on a table. And it is, uh, I, you can't describe it as anything less than creepy. It is creepy, but the results are going to be very exciting. They're using the inner ear bone right. to extract the uh, DNA information. And it's really interesting. You think of... They're all from Rome. Not really. Mm -hmm. Their descendants are going to be surprised. They're going to find that they have some descendants that match with people that have lived in Wales. And also, surprisingly enough, one of the skeletons matches with someone from Palestine or the Saudi Arabia area. Because obviously the Roman Empire stretched all over the place. The injuries are interesting. It looks like somebody was mauled by a bear or something like that. <laughs> and the interesting thing, a lot of them were decapitated. Now, was this... I don't know what that means. But, I don't either. But and they, it, they say they're all under 45 years old. Yeah. And they're all kind of, you know, they're very strong men. And that they were gladiators is what they're determining with these guys. And we're talking going back now 1,800 years. We're talking about 200 years after Christ. Unbelievable. It is. And, you know, with everybody out there that's had their 23 chromosomes done and their DNA work, who knows? They may have dug up great, 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 great grandpa. 
Well, you know, we have exciting news in Boston to announce that it's Black History Month for the month of February, and we are always giving out a guest user database at AmericanAncestors.org. And the one I want to talk about is the one that we have commemorating Black History Month. So if you go onto our site, you can start as a guest user at AmericanAncestors.org, and you can find rich content of an African-American study. We've gathered up databases that reflect African-American research and whether you're of African-American descent or you are a historian in general, curious to what we have, take a peek. I'll tell you, you get some interesting emails, but the other day I got a video sent to me from President Nixon. (laughs) How did you do that, Fish? That was kind of scary and creepy, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. For, for anybody listening who, who maybe doesn't follow us on the Facebook page, there is a new app out. And I didn't even mention it in the page. I didn't want to spoil it, but I guess I need to let the cat out of the bag. It's something called Face Swap Live. It's 99 cents. You download it on your phone and you can take anybody's face and it can be put on yours. So, you know, in my case, because I do a lot of character voices and impressions and all that, I'd find famous people and I'd put their face on mine with this app and record something. In this case, I recorded a thing as Nixon and sent it on to David. And uh, but it's unbelievable. It's better than a mask. It looks like that person is still with us. Well, you know, for genealogists that like to really dig deep into their ancestry and want to get to know their ancestor, well, guess what? Now you can become your ancestor. Yeah, that's true. Get a great photo of grandpa or a great great grandpa and scan it and put it right into your phone and this app and all of a sudden, voila, you are now talking to your ancestor or you're talking as your ancestor or something like that. Well, I was trying to figure out what would be the application for family history with this thing. Because first of all, it's so much fun, you know, Mm -hmm. for parties or just among friends. It'll it'll also swap faces. So if you get two of you in a picture, it'll swap your face with somebody else's face and you'll be on each other's head. It's crazy. (laughs) But when you do this other stuff, you could actually record yourself using the face of your ancestor for that ancestor to tell their own story. Now, how cool and bizarre is that? It it really is. And I can tell you that I'm going to really scare some of my family members in the next coming weeks with this app uh, when they have visits from people like former co-workers that they didn't want to hear from. (laughs) Or uh, better yet, I have some co-workers back in Boston that might get some interesting messages sent from themselves. Uh, Yes. Stay tuned. Those things can happen. (laughs) And and once again, the name of the app is Face Swap Live. It's just 99 cents. You just download it onto your phone, and it's right there. It's very easy to use. Just play with it a little bit, and you'll get the hang of it very quickly. You can download pictures. You can take pictures to use. They have some, a little supply for you to play with to start with uh, but you can do anything in fact i did a thing with uh, the captain of the titanic and did right. an interview with him <laughs> and it looked a little frosty <laughs> <laughs> it did look a little he looked very cold yes well you know i'll tell you tech tips are wonderful and obviously with next week with everything we'll talk about with uh, roots tech you're going to hear lots of them one of the apps that i'm going to be talking about will obviously be the exciting new one by my heritage their audio app yes that's coming out it's going to be really uh, a neat way of saving your family stories with your genealogy program yeah that's a great way to go anytime you can add audio and video that really uh, brings it alive especially when you can preserve a voice exactly because... or preserve a video of someone who yes. really isn't on a video that exists because that camera wasn't invented yet fish <laughs> <laughs> but i love the idea that even if you have just nice photographs you can run their audio over those and mix those together to create a nice presentation wonderful stuff and let me mention that i'm going to be reporting live for your listeners from birmingham england and who do you think you are live in england coming up in april oh that's going to be fun it will it'd be nice to go across the pond my grandfather was from there so i've got some genealogy to do as well and ehs is doing a tour of london afterwards so i'm sneaking in to do who do you think you are a little early with a couple of our staff and we can't wait to meet all the people that are attending and get some stories from the floor of the conference right for our listeners oh it's going to be a lot of fun All right, David, I am very excited today because I have shared with our guest, Nancy Douglas, a handwriting analyst, handwriting samples of some of my ancestors to see what she can tell me about their personalities and what they might have been going through actually at the time that they wrote these samples. 
How really? cool is this? That's huh? exciting. Yes. So we're going to do two full segments with her today. We're going to talk about how she can actually help you know the personality of your ancestors through their handwriting. And then another segment talking about my particular people. I haven't told her anything about them. Then I will share what I know about them with her and see how much these stories match up. That's going to be coming up in about three minutes. So stay close on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. World, and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And you have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. My name is Fisher, the radio root sleuth, and I'm very excited to have on Nancy Douglas. Now, Nancy has a website called RightMeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E Meaning.com which has to do with analyzing the handwriting of your ancestors. And I'm sure there are other uses for this as well, Nancy, but I know that that's uh, certainly one of the emphases that you like to place on what you do. Yes, that's correct, Scott. Now, how long ago did you start this whole thing? Um, I started this when I moved to Utah in 2000, around 2007, and I moved in across the street from a woman whose best friend was a professional handwriting analyst. And I've always had a fascination with handwriting ever since I was little. I remember people by their handwriting. And uh, this gal had a series of courses that she offered, and I took those classes, and then I apprenticed with her for four or five years. Wow. Through that process, I realized that it could be um, one aspect of the services that I provide would be to provide personality profiles for people who happen to have ancestral writing. 
so that's been it's been something that's been very well received and very successful. Now you left Utah for California some time back, and you set up business there. What kind of applications have you applied other than the family history side of it? For living people, um, just general personality profile and personality insight. From a work perspective, I offer employment screening for people who are looking for um, employees with certain personality traits. I can help them screen the people who have applied for those positions and get people into positions uh, who most closely fit the profile of who they're looking for. And that's been very successful as well. It's an excellent way to make sure that people get fit into the correct position and it reduces uh, employee turnover. Um, I can also do team building, uh, something similar to the Myers-Briggs type indicator, but using handwriting where uh, handwriting will reveal to you know your coworkers more about who you are and the ways that you can work together when you have disparate personality profiles. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine once who was uh, dating somebody she knew, and she actually had his handwriting analyzed by somebody who actually does this uh, for for criminal cases where they can actually determine if somebody has a past. Now, do you do things like that? I don't do specifically forensic um, analyzing. That's what that's called when you do that uh, for the court system. There certainly are many analysts who that is what they specialize in. I, but I do do uh, compatibility screening. So uh, whether it's a business partner who you want to make sure if you're going into business, will we be compatible as partners? Or if it's someone who you're looking to um, have as a life partner, I can do compatibility screenings and talk with the people about the, the traits in each of their personalities that would be beneficial or not so great. In addition, um, in, in this day and age of online dating and online profiles where you really don't know somebody, um, it's, it's a good idea to get an idea of who they are, and their handwriting is very revealing about that. So huh. I use that uh, someone, if you're doing online dating and you really want to know, send me a sample of their writing, and I can tell you if you should just run as fast as you can <laughs> or <laughs> if you stick around. That is amazing. Well, this has been very fun to talk to you as we set up this interview because I did send you some samples down of some of my ancestors' handwriting. And uh, yep. for you to take a look at, just go ahead as to which ones you think are the most interesting from the top, and we'll kind of go through them. Okay, that would be fine. I want to give just a little bit of quick background sure. on the areas that look at in someone's handwriting, just so your listeners have an idea of that. We look at the slant of someone's writing, and that's based on what are called the upper zone letters. So in handwriting, there's three zones. Your upper zones, which, for example, would be like a, an L or a T. Lower zone letters, for example, G or Y. And middle zone letters, um, you know, I, M, N, those types of letters. Sure. And each of those zones has something to do with your personality. So upper zone letters represent everything going on in your head, um, your philosophies, your ideas, your creativity, imagination, intellect. Middle zone letters, when I look at those, those reflect the day-to-day -day here and now, what's going on in someone's life. And the lower zone le letters represent all things physical, your physical drives and desires around acquisition of money, your sexuality, your desire for change, level of restlessness, those types of things show up in the lower zone. So we look at that. We look at the slants, like I said. We look right. at the baseline. Um, we look at individual letter formations, and we look at how letters are connected together. Those are just a few of the things that we look at. There's many more things, but I wanted to give a little background to your listeners on that. So for you um, and your ancestors, you sent me basically four samples of writing. And the first one, I think you said, is your second great-grandfather? Yeah, actually, there are a couple of second greats in there. Okay, so this is the small sample it's from the Bible of John Hardy. Okay, yes. And he was a person who was very driven, and that shows up in the letter T. He was a very restless person. He liked change. He liked to do a variety of things. He had very good leadership skills. Uh, at the time of this writing, he was feeling a lot of personal pressure. Yes. And very, he was feeling very squeezed with everything that he had to do in his life at that time. Uh, he was very geared towards the physical aspects of life. Like I said, that lower zone, his lower zone really pops out as being much more emphasized than the middle zone and the upper zone mm -hmm. in this writing. And so someone who's very driven by material acquisition wants to make sure that he's taking care of himself and his family from a monetary sense. 
those types of things. And that's also where the restlessness shows up as well. The other thing that jumped out, again, was he was a very, was a very tenacious person. And again, going back to that drive, and that shows up in the variety of ways that he crosses his letter T. So that's a little bit about that grandfather. All right, let me tell you a little about what I know about him. He was born in uh, the area of Nottinghamshire, England, in the early 1800s. He was married briefly to a woman who died uh, young. He lost a child, and then he married my great-great-grandmother. They came to America. He was uh, what they call a boot closer, and they came to New York City and settled there. And at the time that he wrote that, uh, they had just lost a baby girl. And so he inscribed this Bible to his wife at that time, obviously, in my mind, just based on the date, to give her comfort. Mm, mm-hmm. Very good. One of the things, this is a photocopy of that, and so I, didn't, I can't see all of the level of detail, but it's interesting that it, he also appears a little bit tired at this time. Mm-hmm. The upstrokes on his lower zone letters, I don't know if you're looking at the sample with me at the same time. But I'm not. The upstrokes the lower zone letters are much lighter so when you, the downstroke's easy to make, you're going with gravity, but when you're pushing up against that, if you don't have enough sort of vital life energy when you're doing that, it will show up as much lighter, and that's typ- a typical sign of someone who's feeling kind of tired at that time. So that's an interesting reflection about yes. that and what he's writing about. Okay, great. Who else do you have there? The next sample that you sent was uh, out of also out of a Bible, mm-hmm. the family Bible page of the Fishers, and you, um, you'd ask me to look specifically at the smaller writing at the bottom of this, but what's interesting to note is that this is a great example of slants. So the person who wrote the top part has a very vertical to recline slant. Yes. Slant slant tells us about how you go about making decisions. Are you an emotional decision maker or are you a logical decision maker? People with vertical writing are very, very logical. They're what we call the head over heart people. They're good to have around in a time of crisis. So they don't let emotions run away with them, and they don't, you know, crack under pressure. So that, who, who's the writing on the top? Is that that would be people? that would be Robert Fisher, who was another second great grandfather, and uh, he was raised by a stepfather whose name he took. At least I believe that's the case. I've never been able to prove it, but uh, there's a lot of reason to believe that was the case. And it doesn't appear he had much of a relationship with him. So I think he he grew up being a tough guy emotionally, became very involved with the Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, founded a church there, was was part of it. He wasn't clergy, but he was very involved in that. And I think he was a very stern father with his children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can see that in here. So we do have, like I said, this vertical writing, too, interestingly reclined. And when your writing begins to get reclined, it's people who withhold emotion. Yes. And so he would not have been a very warm and uh, giving person with other people in that sense. He was very reserved, emotionally reserved. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we return, we're going to talk more with Nancy Douglas, the handwriting analyst from writemeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E meaning.com. And she's going to look at some of the signatures of, shall we say, one of my more colorful ancestors when we return in five minutes on America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. 
Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. You know, a radio person once asked me if there was really enough material out there to talk about on a family history radio show every week. Well, now in our third year of Extreme Genes, I think he knows the answer. And uh, this visit with ancestral handwriting expert Nancy Douglas is a perfect example of how many different aspects there are to talk about. So before we get back to the analysis of the writing in my 19th century Bible, let me ask you this, Nancy. Can you tell male from female handwriting? No, and that's one of the interesting things about handwriting analysis is it's sort of it's a very neutral way to see someone because you don't know if they're male or female. There are masculine tendencies and traits and feminine tendencies and traits, so you okay. can sort of make a, a guess, but really it's just a guess. So my guess was on that Bible is that the top handwriting was male and the smaller handwriting at the bottom was by a female. It could be or not. I really couldn't tell you, honestly. Okay. There's no indications. Now, you'll notice that the bottom writing is slanted more to the right. And this smaller. Is, and it's smaller, but I wasn't sure if there's more information here. So if she had a, or he, the writer, had a an area that they had to fit the writing into. So uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it is smaller, but I don't know this is an accurate reflection okay. of size. And size of writing does absolutely say something um, about people as well. The interesting thing that I noticed on this writing just right away that I saw is the lower zone. The lower zone letters have what are called a dumping stroke. What that means is people who feel extremely overwhelmed at the time of the writing, and they're, they just really need to get rid of responsibility. And the writing is downhill, and I think their health was not very good when they were writing this. Um, okay. Downhill writing is a... Is a sign of someone who's either extremely fatigued, not feeling well, or emotionally depressed. And there's other signs in this writing that show uh, there's a lightness, like a lack of vitality, a lack of life vitality at this time. But it's also a person who's very had good balance, very clear thinking, but, but they were feeling overwhelmed at the time of this writing. Now, see, I, I believe that's the widow of Robert Fisher who wrote that. I don't know for a fact because I don't have any handwriting to compare it to. But she would have written it just analyzing, you know, when the dates and when the hand changed within the Bible. There were five different people who wrote in this Bible that this was late in her life, probably in her 80s, that she wrote this. So all this seems to fit beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last sample that you gave me um, is a series of signatures of your great-grandfather. Is yes. Right? Great-grandfather Andrew, the fireman, and his wife, Jenny. Very interesting. The, the, one, the thing that grabbed me right away was that she signed her last name like his, in particular where the the word breaks. So he he does F and then a break and then I S and a break and then H E R, and she does that very similarly similarly to his. So that tells me there's a level of maybe tradition in there. Okay, she's following her husband. He's an interesting person. Both of them had a very similar slant, um, which might have made them hard to be around because their slant is what's called very inclined, which means a high level of emotional decision making. And so people who have that kind of a slant introduce a lot more emotion into their decision making and they can tend to overreact when faced with a crisis. They don't handle that well. So it's interesting that he's a firefighter. That's very fascinating to me. Um, yes. <laughs> there was a lot more to him, too. Keep going. Yeah. 
he also has these very interesting hooks on his capital letter A. And those hooks are something that show that he was hooked on something in the past or something he couldn't let go of. And he also has a hook on the end of his letter on the R. And that hook, in its best form, can be someone who's very tenacious. And in its worst form, someone who's extremely opinionated and could be sometimes cruel and sarcastic with others. So that was very interesting to me, both of those hooking. He was a very analytical person. He had a great deal of personal pride. He could be very sensitive to criticism. I believe all these things, absolutely. He was into politics. He actually uh, ran for office at one time. He did not make it. He was a merchant with his brother, but he was the junior merchant between the partners. And then he he had, uh, shall we say, a lot of relationships. (laughs) relationships. <laughs> okay, interesting. Interesting. He was definitely a talker as well. He leaves on the letter D. He leaves the belly of the D open from the stem, which indicates someone who liked to talk. And in many of these samples, there's a lot of what I call pressure points, which means that he was feeling like he was under pressure when he was writing these. There, there's, there's a very sharp angular quality to his writing, which can indicate him not being particularly warm and fuzzy with other people. I think that's true, too. Yeah, he was also the the head of the Veteran Firemen's Association for the retired guys at one point. So we see a lot of newspaper quotes from him. He was very talkative. Interesting, yeah. And he also was an intuitive person. Um, the way that he breaks up his letters and his name, they're not connected. If you go back and look, and you'll see that he has the A, and then he writes the N, and then there's a space, and then he puts the Drew together. And he does the same in his last name. And when you have those disconnects, In the writing, it means that you're someone who, rather than being a a person who has to logically step through step by step by step by step, you're more of an intuitive thinker, so you think about many things at one time and kind of put puzzle pieces together. And then in contrast to that, your great-grandmother, Jenny, she she was a softer person, a softer human. She probably had to be a counterpoint to his sort of sharpness. She was a cultured woman. I wondered if she might be a musician. Uh, She had a great imagination. And she was much more open and friendly to other people than Andrew was. Yeah, one story about them got passed down, an oral tradition that came through my aunt, that one day a neighbor came to Jenny in New York City, this would have been in the 1880s probably, and said, I saw Mr. Fisher come home in the great cab last night and assisted into the house. Was he ill? And she said, no, he wasn't ill. He was just dead drunk. (laughs) <laughs> so, I, you know, I can see the softness of her just accepting the situation, and I can see the hard living of this man. Very right. interesting. Yeah. So um, just, a li- just, just a little bit about your, about your folks. And when I do an analysis, it, depending on how, many, how big my sample size is, I should say, it can take me a day's work to actually— Oh, I'll bet. Um, Go through, go through the writing and really understand there's very, a lot of variation, a lot of subtlety in this. It's a, it's a science, and it's classified as a science in the Library of Congress, but there's also a level of art to it. Um, it's classified under the same system as psychology is, so there's, there's both aspects to that. And so when I look, I almost inhabit the person and really try to get a sense of who they are. And the feedback that I get from folks is nobody gives me free information because I never want that. And I always get the post information, and it's really exciting to see how stories match up, in particular if there's still ancestors who are alive who know the person that I was analyzing. So um, that's always fun to see. Well, all the folks you talked about uh, lived and died in the 19th century. So it's, it's very fun to get that insight that you couldn't get any other way. Right, exactly. And so the other interesting thing is you can see in your own self, are there traits that you, personality traits that you've inherited? And that will show right. up in similarities in writing. And that's always a fun aspect of this as well. Well, this is great stuff, Nancy. Thank you so much for your time, your insight. Fascinating. I know listeners are going to want to know more about this. And they can go to your website, writemeaning.com. All your contact information is right there. And by the way, for people who have been listening to the segment and want to see these, these samples of the handwriting, I'll have them posted on our Facebook page so you can check it out. Okay, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Scott, so much for your time. I really appreciate that. All right, great stuff. Nancy Douglas from rightmeaning.com. And coming up next, Tom Perry, the Preservation Authority, joins us to answer a couple of great listener questions 
about digitizing old photo albums and why a flash drive works showing a video in a computer but not in a high-def TV. Find out what Tom's got to say about these issues coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher. So excited to tell you about our very first Extreme Genes Family History Cruise, September 13th through 18th, 2016. We'll be leaving out of Boston on Royal Caribbean with stops in Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. On days we're at sea, join me and David Allen Lambert, Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org for lectures and roundtables on several genealogical topics. See where your patriot ancestors fought in the revolution or where your loyalist ancestors claimed their new homes for pricing go to our extreme genes facebook page or visit extremegenes.com now is the time to make your reservations because when the cabins are gone they're gone call robin at columbus travel at 1-800-373-3328 extension 1010 and be sure to ask her about our special pre-cruise excursion in boston david and i look forward to seeing you Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. And we are back. America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, and it is preservation time with our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Hello, Tommy. Hello. It's wonderful to be here again. Yes, and we do have a question here that has been emailed to Ask Tom at TMCPlace.com. It's from Lisa Sorensen. Doesn't say where she's from, but Lisa asks, I'm interested in having a very old photo album digitized. Two old albums, actually. Do you work with very old photos, and what would the cost be to have this done? Oh, absolutely. You bet. We do photo albums. You know, photo albums is really generic. It's like saying photograph. Right. There's different kinds of albums. I've seen ones with daguerreotypes in them. I've seen ones that actually have the old glass plates. We've seen ones that are torn, that are faded, all kinds of things. It's going to depend what condition your photos are in, how old they are, if you want any changes with them. For instance, we had somebody brought in a photo album that we were digitizing, and then they called us and said, hey, my mother's just passed away. We need a good photo for her obituary. And my favorite photo of her is the one with her and me at my wedding. 
However, I'm in the picture too, and I don't want to be in an obituary. And if I just cut myself out, I'm going to have to cut off her shoulder. It's going to look really bad. What can you do? So what we did is we actually had our artist go in and remove him, rebuild her shoulder, and then it looked just like it was a single picture. It looked wonderful. Right. Yes. It's just amazing what you can do with apps, what you can do with Photoshop, different kinds of software. So the biggest thing is to figure out exactly what you want. If you want them just digitized and you want to do all your work with them, it's pretty inexpensive to... Um, do photos, whether you have us do it or a reputable place by you. Just make sure that wherever you get it done, that they do it in-house. I hear all kinds of horror stories where somebody sends them off to India or something oh. like that to save some money, and there's no way I would do that. There's no way. So I try to find somebody local. If you are going to ship it, I always tell people, make sure you double box everything and put a label on both boxes just in case the worst case happens. We've been doing this for over 40 years. Unfortunately, we've never lost anything in any transit one way or another. And you might want to go back to one of our older episodes that are available on the podcast, the free podcast, where we tell you actually how to make a box, the best way yes, to do it. That's right. That's a good point. You know, when they use the term old, an old photo album, well, what does that mean? You know, maybe to Lisa, old is the 1960s. Oh, absolutely. To me, it's the 1920s, and maybe to somebody else, it's the 1870s. Oh, yeah, exactly. We have people call us all the time and say, oh, I've got this film. It's so old. Can you still transfer? It's from the 70s. And it's like, (laughs) okay. I mean, we have stuff that's playing in our store, for instance, that's back the old black and white days, the early 1900s, where you see these 1920 Model A Fords drive past. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You've you've actually went and digitized some of those. Oh, yeah. We've got them playing in our store. The customer gave us permission to play them. We've had people that had to want to colorize black and white. We had people that want to go and take outlaws out of their home movies, all kinds of things, just like this photo album. Wait, wait a minute. You can actually colorize black and white home movies? Oh, absolutely. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not cheap, no and idea. I wouldn't do it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I've got some old black and whites my dad shot that I wouldn't want to colorize because that changes the whole thing of it. Just like some of the old I Love Lucy movies when I watched them when they were black and white. I don't like seeing them right. in color. No, I agree with you. I don't like it, for instance, when they colorize something like It's a Wonderful Life. Exactly. It's just, it's not right. Right, because you got to understand when that show was done and they cast it and they got their costume directors, et cetera, they knew it was going to be in black and white. So they used colors that looked good in black and white that would complement each other, not clash. But when you take those and turn them into the colors, that's not what the producer had in mind. That's not what the continuity people had in mind. And to me, it just, it's just uncomfortable. Right. But you can do it. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's oh, the absolutely. fun part. We had a customer that has an ex-son-in-law. We had to edit them out of all their photo albums. We edited them out of their movies, everything. So you'd see <laughs> you'd see this water skiing, and he was in the back of the boat, and you'd see this water skier, and just it would get to him, we'd have to cut. There's time-lapse thing that's kind of lost. If you can imagine it, we can do it. That's absolutely astonishing. All right, we got another question coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be back in three minutes with more from Tom Perry on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmasters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. 
Scientificstudies.com. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the GrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. You know, I don't know why, Tom, we get some people who write in and they give us their name but not where they're from, and then other people who tell us where they're from and not their names. And exactly. That's the case <laughs> with this next question. Hey, it's Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show with Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, and Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com answering questions about preservation. And uh, this one's from Santa Ana, California, asking about flash drives. And he says, if you plug it into the back of his computer, everything's great. But if you put it in a flat screen TV, nothing. What's the story with that, Tom? Okay, there could be several different things there. We had a customer the other day that actually stopped in our store, and she said, oh, I've got this flash drive. I need these photos. I take it and I look at it, and what it is, it's actually a USB adapter with a micro SD card into it. So okay. she just thought it was a normal flash drive, but it's not. It has a removable SD card in it. So there's all different kinds of things out there, but the way they work, the nomenclature, so to speak, is all the same. Okay. So what you need to do is know what format it is. A lot of times we ask people well, when they call in or they write in what format are your files, and they go, huh? So what you want to do, you'll want to take whatever kind of format you have, whether it's a USB drive, whether it's a disk, it's irrelevant, put it in your computer. And if you're a Windows user for like a PC, what you want to do is once you see the icon on your desktop, you just double click on just the icon. You don't want to open up anything inside that. And so that'll expand the window and then you'll see all your files. Then you want to go to the top of your screen and tell it to sort by properties. And that will show you the file name, the file size, if it's a MOV, if it's a PDF, no matter what file it is. And then a lot of times if you're going to have us do work or you don't know even what these files mean, do a screenshot on your computer and then you can email that to us or have it in front of you when right. you're talking to us, okay? If it's a Mac, you don't have to search under properties. The same thing, you put the disk in the USB drive, double click so it opens a folder, and then it'll automatically on a Mac give you all that kind of stuff generally. And so you'll do the same thing. Oh, I have MOVs, I have AVIs, I have XYZs, whatever they happen to be. And there's all kinds of weird things out there. And if you want to research them, all you got to do is take the dot, whatever it is, type it into Google, and it'll tell you what it is. If you don't want to deal with that, give us a call. We'll find out what ones can be transferred to video, what ones are executable files, so they're not really something that you'd want to actually watch on a DVD. They're more of like a, a brain to tell something sure. else what to do. So once you get those to us, then we can figure out, okay, it's this size, it's an MP4, so we can take normal software like PowerDirector and edit your MP4 or do whatever you want to do with it. So you take that file and say, okay, I've got this, 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 and this, and then I can say, oh, okay, well, you've got an MOV. Your TV doesn't play MOVs. Most TVs only play MP4s, generally. So the best thing to do is get out your owner's manual. If you've lost it, just go online, Google it, and you can find your owner's manual any place and find out what kind of formats it takes. So when you call us, you can say, hey, my TV takes you know this, it takes this, it takes this, or it only plays MP4s. So when we transfer it for you or tell you how you can transfer it yourself, you'll make sure you end up with the correct file that will play on your TV. If your TV plays MP4s and we make you a quick time, you're out of luck yeah. and vice versa. Not going to work too well. Exactly. And so now be careful, too. We had somebody that came in that had us make 300 flash drives for them, and we needed to find out, well, what format do you want it? That, well, well people are going to be doing this, 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 and this. Well, if you get a big enough flash drive, you can put an MOV on it. You can put the MP4 on it, and you can put a QuickTime, so no matter which 
computer or TV they have, it'll play on all of them. So you need to know some of this information before you get started. Exactly. Just like when we teach you when you're transferring any of your films or videos, what is your end point? We're talking fundamentals here, and it's great stuff. Thanks so much, Tom. See you next week. Thank you. We'll be here. And that wraps up our show for this week. Thanks once again to handwriting analyst Nancy Douglas from writemeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E meaning.com for coming on the show and talking about the personalities of my ancestors as she was able to determine it from old Bible records. And I'm sure she could do some of the same for you. Hey, and don't forget, next week we'll be talking about all that's gone on at Roots Tech. It's going to be a great show. Talk to you then. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.